Good evening, everybody. Thanks, for, thanks to Novartis for the kind invitation. And we've been using uh, Perlucizumab in Italy since the beginning of uh, 2021. And I will show you uh, five clinical cases uh, on, uh, in exudative AMD. So uh, those are my disclosures. Uh, this is the first patient. Uh, it's a female, 70 years old, uh, 2025, uh, the visual acuity with uh, vascularized uh, pigment epithelia detachment and subretinal fluid. Uh, we treat this patient, we, we, we saw for the first time this patient on May 2021, and we um, initially treated this patient with uh, a loading phase of bevacizumab and actually we had uh, a pretty good results uh, about the formation of a, a corridor cleft which uh, uh, we, we know it's a, a negative prognostic factor for RPE, uh, RPE tears. Um, after uh, the um, following the follow-up we observed on September 16, 21, 2021, a recurrence and there was a, a subretinal fluid and there was still the presence, the, the corridor cleft and the pigment epithelia detachment was a, a little bit uh, larger. Uh, we decided to uh, switch uh, uh, treatment to a flibercept. This is the uh, with a loading phase of three injection on uh, uh, September, October and uh, November 2021. We saw the patient again uh, on January uh, 2022, uh, but again we saw uh, or a recurrence uh, or a persistence of the exudation. We don't know because maybe we, we lost uh, the, the maximal effect of the uh, of, the, of the drug, uh, but there was still presence uh, of the uh, corridor cleft. So we decided to uh, switch uh, the patient to berlucizumab and uh, uh, after just one berlucizumab that we performed on February 2022, uh, after a few days, we observed a very uh, good results in terms in, 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 uh, in term of uh, resolution, uh, not only of the exudation of the subretinal exudation which was uh, completely resolved but also uh, the corridor cleft was uh, completely resolved and, uh, and I think that this is a, a pretty peculiar case because uh, I don't remember uh, uh, such a, a very uh, a good results also with uh, the resolution of the corridor cleft. We keep injecting uh, uh, the patient, uh, February, March, April 2022, and there was a, 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 the persistent of the complete resolution of the, of the fluid, the macula was uh, completely uh, dry. We performed uh, a, a, another injection on July 2022, uh, just to maintain the, the good effect uh, that we obtained with the, with the loading phase of, uh, uh, of berlucizumab. And this is the, um, the, the, the kind of resume of visual acuity and of the central macular thickness uh, with uh, the different uh, uh, anti-VGF that we uh, performed on this patient. Patient number two, um, female, 75 years old, 2040 visual acuity. Uh, there was a, a disgregation of the uh, outer retinal layer and uh, there was fluid and uh, a choroidal neovascularization, very, very tiny, very small choroidal neovascularization. We uh, decided to inject uh, uh, with borosizumab and we obtained actually a very uh, a beautiful uh, uh, resolution of the exudation. The macula was uh, uh, completely uh, uh, was completely dry. We uh, keep uh, injecting the patient and uh, we obtain a, a, a maintenance of the, uh, of the resolution of the fluid. So we were pretty happy uh, also with uh, this case and the visual acuity improved uh, uh, sing significantly. Patient number three, uh, we started uh, uh, following the patient, this patient on December 2020. Uh, she had uh, a, some drusen, bilateral drusen, uh, in, in both eyes. 
And uh, however, on uh, October 2022, there was a vascularized pigment epithelial detachment on uh, her right eye with uh, fluid, uh, lipids, uh, and we decided to inject the patient. And we started again with uh, uh, berlucizumab. And as you can see, the results were very, uh, very good. We were happy with uh, this patient again uh, with pigment epithelial detachment, with, uh, which uh, appears to, to uh, respond very well to uh, this drug. Uh, on February uh, 2022, there was a completely resolution of the subretinal fluid and also of the pigment epithelial detachment, and there was a uh, uh, still uh, uh, the, the persistence of the complete resolution during the follow-up visit. Patient number four, uh, this was a patient with uh, a significantly a significant uh, decrease in visual acuity because it was a, a let's say predominantly classic uh, choroidal neovascularization. There was a huge hemorrhage in the macular region. Uh, there was a subretinal fluid and intraretinal uh, edema. We decided to start uh, uh, bolucizumab, uh, three initial uh, monthly doses. We were curious to see uh, after a while what was the uh, appearance of the macula and we uh, observed, however, on, uh, after the first uh, uh, injection of blucizumab, an RP tear, which uh, does not have to, uh, to surprise. Uh, it's not uh, the effect, of, of course, of the drug. We are usually to observe the uh, RP tears after uh, uh, in, a, in a pigment epithelial uh, detachment. We keep injecting the, uh, the patient and uh, there was a, a a pretty uh, complete resolution of the exudation. Uh, the uh, choroidal neovascularization almost completely regressed. It remained a, a just a very a tiny fibrous uh, um, lesion, uh, uh, yuxtafovel. Uh, but the, the important thing that was that the macula was completely uh, dry. Visual acuity didn't improve very much, uh, but anyway, we have uh, uh, some kind of improvement because of the lesion at the beginning was very uh, huge and there was a disgregation and a complete uh, 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 damage of the uh, outer retinal layer. So this is the reason why the visual acuity didn't uh, improve so much. And this is <coughs> the, the last follow-up visit of uh, uh, the patient showing the persistence of the completely dry macula. The last case, patient number five, uh, this is a, a patient that we um, uh, diagnosed, uh, we, we, we can diagnose, uh, uh, this is a borderline patient. Uh, we can say that uh, it's uh, exuded AMD as well as uh, a CSC complicated with a choroidal neovascularization. It's a borderline case. So there is a, a very uh, well uh, highlighted the choroidal neovascularization, which ca you can see uh, in the OCT angiography, uh, growing underneath the um, flattened the pigment epithelial detachment and uh, around this, uh, the, the, the PD there is also uh, subretinal fluid. We inject uh, with uh, uh, berlucizumab and this is the uh, effect of the drug, the complete resolution of the exudation and also uh, the uh, significant uh, closure also not completed of the choroidal neovascularization. Uh, patients uh, uh, had a recurrence of the of the lesion, and uh, uh, we, however, keep injecting the patient and uh, obtain a complete resolution again of the of the patient of the of the exudation, and also a good maintenance of the uh, visual acuity. Thank you for your attention.